we get lots of questions about sweeteners and I had written a post and posted it on my Facebook page Simply Keto and in the Facebook group about sweeteners and so this is a very similar this is very similar kind of information to that but I'm going to talk about what sweeteners I believe are safe and which ones that you should avoid. Let's start with xylitol. So this is xylitol and it comes with uh, by a lot of different brands. It, I don't know if you can see the crystals, you probably can't, but it is like a, a sugar that's a, a bigger crystal, not super fine, but the more like you would dust a cupcake with. Now this is xylo sweet and it's, I've got it in packets. It, is cup for cover, cup for cup measures just like sugar, and it is made from either birch or birch bark or from corn. I have found that the xylitol made from birch is a lot safer for me. It doesn't raise blood glucose. It is a sugar alcohol. It has a very low glycemic index, and you should test if you use it. You should use your glucometer to see if it has any impact on your blood glucose. But xylitol, it doesn't have an aftertaste. I really, really love it. One of the best things about xylitol is that it doesn't raise blood glucose. It doesn't have an aftertaste. It's used in a lot of gums, sugar-free breath mints, and things like that. The problem with xylitol, and the reason why I really don't have it in the house anymore, um, and we use it very carefully, it is toxic to dogs. Just this much would uh, be toxic, would be fatal to even our big dog, Winston, our 65 pound uh, Springer Spaniel. And certainly this much would be toxic to Banjo, our smaller Morky. So if you have pets in the house that are um, floor sweepers, the way ours are, be very careful if you use xylitol. Um, I have this and when it's gone, it probably will, I probably won't have any more in the house. In fact, my husband didn't even realize we still had the xylitol in the house. But again, it's a great taste. It doesn't have an, any aftertaste. It is a sugar alcohol, generally considered safe. It can cause digestive upset in some people at much higher. You'd have to ingest a lot. But if you're sensitive to sugar alcohols, you might not want to use it. But again, no aftertaste. It is one of my favorites, except for it being toxic to pets. So xylitol is a great option um, if, you, if you don't mind that part. The other um, very common sugar alcohol that folks use in low carb alternative goods is erythritol. Now this is just a big bag of generic erythritol. The thing about erythritol is it is a sugar alcohol. It actually has a lower glycemic index than xylitol. Erythritol is often made from corn, so you wanna make sure you buy some non-GMO erythritol. It does not have an impact on blood glucose for most people. The concern for me with erythritol is it has a cooling aftertaste. Now it's never caused any digestive issues and it is one of the sugar alcohols that for most people um, is safe, but it does have a cooling aftertaste. The other thing about erythritol is it's only three quarters as sweet as sugar. So if a recipe you're converting called for a cup of sugar, you would, um, it would, you would need to use a cup and a quarter or so uh, to be as sweet as the real thing. So that's generic erythritol. The other kind of big sweetener that's really common is stevia. And I had, oh, and I'm sorry, let me show you real quick. The erythritol looks like this. It's a finer granule um, than xylitol. Now both of these, the erythritol and the xylitol, all of the granulated sweeteners can be thrown into a ninja or a blender and you can make a powdered or confectioner's erythritol. Okay, the other is stevia. Now stevia is one of those things that people either love it or they hate it. I have tried to love stevia. In fact, if you'll look at all of these products, these are all various brands of stevia that I have purchased trying to find one that I love. And actually there's another there's new nat there's new naturals. This is sweet leaf powdered. I also have a sweet leaf liquid in the cupboard somewhere. This is Trader Joe's organic liquid stevia because people swore by it. This is a um, organic stevia. And then this is all natural stevia extract. And I have tried to love all of it. Now this one actually has erythritol, so it's a blend. Let me put it over here. The problem, and I've just discovered this recently, um, thanks to Scott Swenson at, she, the, he has a blog, she calls me Hobbit. Scott was kind enough to explain to me that when you're buying stevia, you want the pure stevia that has 90% stevia sides. That way you avoid the bitter aftertaste. Now this is 
the pure stevia and I've put a little bit in here it's just a very clear powder now this stuff is so sweet um, even if you just you know lick the tip of your finger and put it in here it's too sweet to really enjoy it so what is difficult about using it is it's very difficult to adapt in recipes. You need one of the very tiny, not even the tad or the pinch, but the very, very tiny measuring spoons you use like in chemical experiments to measure it out. It doesn't give the bulk that the other sweeteners give in baking. So if you're baking a muffin or a low carb or a pound cake or something like that, it works okay, but it doesn't give the bulk of the others. This is 90, remember the key here is this is 90% or higher stevia sides, so there's no bitter aftertaste. When you're buying something like this, it's a mix. It comes from the leaf, and the leaf has the bitter part. And so you want the 90% stevia, um, stevia sides extract to, to avoid the bitter aftertaste. So that's the clue. So I don't know what I'm going to do with all of this stevia, but I have spent a lot of time and money trying to find a good stevia option. And um, all of that is going by the wayside. And I have been using a little, I've been blending um, stevia with other sweeteners. Now what works really well if you're using pure erythritol, um, or, you know, I told you it has that cooling after effect that people kind of object to. What works well is if I use some of the granulated erythritol and blend a little bit of the pure stevia. The, the two of them together have this synergistic effect that's very nice and there's no aftertaste. It kind of, the aftertaste gets canceled out by using the two together. So that's a really great option. If you're doing a baked good, use a half a cup of erythritol, a tiny bit of this, always taste for sweetness because our taste change as we get low carb, high fat, and, um, and different people find different th levels of sweetness more pleasant than others. So anyway, always test your batter, but that is, and, and this brand is called Mommy Knows Best, that you can look for as long as you look in the ingredients and it says 90% stevia sides, you're generally going to be safe. Now, what's all this? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I have one more pure sweetener to tell you about. This is pure sucralose. This is the powdered blend, and the powdered sucralose looks like this. It looks kind of like powdered sugar. This is 600 times sweeter than sugar. Now, pure sucralose looks a lot like another product that we don't use, Splenda. People tell me all the time, how can you use Splenda? I don't use Splenda. I need to clean out my cabinets. This is a big bag of Splenda and see how big it is? That's because it hasn't been used. Splenda has sucralose in it but Splenda also has maltodextrin. And it, if you look at the ingredients, maltodextrin is listed first and then sucralose. So if you see Splenda on something, it's sucralose. Don't use this. This is a big X. We don't use it. Maltodextrin is a sugar starch and it's a sugar starch that causes your blood glucose to spike. I don't use Splenda. What I do use or have used from time to time, to time is sucralose. The pure powdered, which is, like I said, 600 times sweeter than sugar, um, or the liquid. The liquid, and I have two brands here, Easy Sweets and Sucra Drops. I like them both. But the liquid is basically taking this powdered sucra, putting and mixing it with water. It's easier to measure out, and really just two drops of this is um, equal to two teaspoons of sugar. So one drop of this is one teaspoon of sugar. And there, it's really very sweet. And when you put it in your coffee, this comes with a little dropper. And you just want a drop or so um, in your coffee. It's perfect. It um, mixes well with erythritol as well. And so often I'll use a granulated erythritol and then use this to offset the cooling effect. And so that's pure sucralose, not um, Splenda, so please don't leave me comments about how horrible and evil um, sucralose is. There's a conflicting research, and I have read the research, but in general, most of the time it's considered safe. Now, what is all this? What I've been doing um, with this, and this is a stevia erythritol blend, what folks have figured out, what manufacturers have figured out, is that the blends of erythritol and stevia really do taste best than one or the other by itself. So this is one blend. This is Swerve. Swerve is very popular in the low-carb world, um, the powdered form and the granulated. 
I don't care for Swerve because in my mind and my taste buds, it doesn't have enough of the stevia to offset. Um, it also has oligosaccharides. I can't even pronounce it. But anyway, it doesn't, actually it doesn't have stevia. It has erythritol and oligosaccharides. I only use Swerve if I can mix another sweetener with it. I've used Swerve mixed with xylitol, with uh, liquid sucralose, or with stevia. Some people love it. Um, but it leaves just an aftertaste for me that we don't enjoy. But if you use it, it's great. It's a great option if you like the taste. Truvia is another option. Um, it doesn't have, it has the stevia that can have the bitter aftertaste. It's not a bad option. It's very easy to find. It's actually, I think, put out by the Coke or Pepsi company. I can't remember which now. But um, it is fine. It's Cargill. It's made by Cargill. It's okay to use, and it's fairly easy to find, and it measures, as I understand it, cup for cup like sugar. This is a newer brand that's on the market, um, and it's, again, a blend of erythritol and stevia, and one teaspoon of this is equal to two teaspoons of sugar. It has a little higher blend of um, stevia, but keep in mind, it's the stevia leaf, so it does have that bitter stevia aftertaste that I object to, uh, but again, it's easy to find and it's perfectly acceptable to use. Now, y'all know these are my favorites because I talk about the Sucrin products all the time. I love these products, and I actually am missing, there's a, there is a plain Sucrin that is pure erythritol, and I do use that, but again, because I don't love erythritol by itself, I tend to prefer the Sucrin 1. Sucrin 1 is a blend of erythritol and stevia, uh, I can't even say it, glycosides, which again doesn't have that bitter aftertaste. This is Sucrin Plus. I really love Sucrin Plus because it also has erythritol and stevia, but it has a higher uh, proportion of stevia. So whereas I would use maybe a cup for this, because Sucrin 1 measures cup for cup just like sugar, for I'd use a cup of this, I would use about three quarters of a cup of this. This, Sucrin Melis, or it's also called Sucrin Icing, is the confectioner sugar bland. It's basically powdered sugar compared to this. And it is a blend of erythritol and stevia. This stuff is perfect in icings. Um, if you're making icing for a cake, if you're making fat bombs, it doesn't give the gritty texture for the finished product. It dissolves really easily. It's great in ice creams. So anytime you would use like a powdered sugar, confectioner sugar, uh, I use the confectioner sugar. I do love this stuff. And the one product that I don't know, it's changed my low carb life, is the Sucrin Gold. And this is a brown sugar substitute. This has tagatose in it um, and malt extract, but it also is primarily uh, erythritol and stevia. This does not impact my blood glucose. This is for perfect for making a low carb caramel sauce. It's great in cookies. You know, you've seen me use it in the peanut butter hero cookies. Um, I used it in the gorilla bread, the um, Paula Dean copycat gorilla bread recipe that I made around Christmas time. And so this is a game changer. If you took all my sweeteners away and I could only keep three, I'll keep my top three, I would keep the sucrine gold, the Milas uh, icing, and the Sucrin Plus, because again, even though this is a blend of erythritol and stevia, it's my favorite. And yes, I would even give up sucralose for these three products. Um, the last thing I'll share with you that a Sucrin has that I really love is the fiber syrups. Now, the fiber syrups are IMOs. I can't even pronounce this stuff. Isomaltoglucosaccharides? IMOs, that's what they are. It's a fiber syrup. It is almost pure dietary fiber, and it does have the sugars. The glycemic index is supposed to be very low, but what I have found just through my Facebook group and interaction with others is that while it does not spike my blood glucose, some people have had concerns about it. I love this stuff. I use this in my pecan pie recipe. I've never had any issues with it. I've used it um, to make meringue, and um, I'm playing with a marshmallow, a low-carb marshmallow recipe. I really do love this stuff. So if you order it, if you get it, do test your blood glucose just to make sure that you're not having issues with it. Those are the sweeteners that I love and that I use. Now, let's talk about some that we don't use. So this is the no list. I've already mentioned Splenda as one item that I don't use. Um, something that a lot of folks use is sugar-free syrup. 
Now this is the kind of sugar-free syrup that folks buy to put on the low-carb pancakes, even the cream cheese pancakes. Don't. Pour this out if you have it in your house. Um, I'm cleaning my cabinets out right after I do this video. It has sorbitol, it has cellulose gum, and it has ACE-K. It is not something that you really want in your body. This one's not as bad as some of the others, but the sorbitol raises your blood glucose. It's more of a problem for most people than folks realize. Sorbitol is also a sugar alcohol that can cause digestive upset. This is honey. This is a sugar-free honey, and it has malitol in it, um, and also ACE-K. Malitol, it gives you, one, it spikes blood glucose, and two, it can give you serious digestive upset. So definitely don't want this stuff. Anything that raises your blood glucose causes an insulin response. Insulin is that mean hoarder hormone that shoves fat into your cells. If you're stalling or having problems with weight loss and you're using one of these items, that's probably to blame. Uh, let me see, Grace, Grace is handing me stuff. Let me see the um, other syrups. Now, people love these things and you're just gonna have to hate what I'm saying. But this is the Da Vinci syrup, and this is the Tarani syrup. Um, these are just some that I have. My husband's like, oh my, we need to throw these out. They probably expired two years ago. Why do I know this stuff? Why do I know what like works and doesn't work? Because I've made every mistake in the book. I am that person. I have a whole host of these. I have more of these than probably Starbucks has, every flavor that you can imagine. And I was wondering why I couldn't lose weight when I used them. Well, they have Ace-K in them and they have Splenda. Now remember, Splenda's different. Splenda has maltodextrin in it. If it used pure sucralose, then it might be okay, but this is not. This is not something that you want to use. doesn't matter if it's the Da Vinci brand or the Tarani brand. If you're using these and not losing weight as you think you should, throw them out. And if you want some, come on by the house. Mine will be in the recycle bin in just a couple of hours. Coconut sugar. Now, if you believe the hype, it says it's a low glycemic impact. Um, it's, a, it's a healthier alternative to table sugar. It's still sugar. I bought it, um, it expired over a year ago. It's been in my cabinet, like I said, it's time to clean the cabinets out. It is sugar, one teaspoon has four carbs. I thought that it was okay, um, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter that it's coconut sugar, it's still sugar, and again, not something you should be using. So, there is so much more to say about sweeteners. We could talk for hours and hours, and you can see I've tried many, many different products. These are just some, there are others that I've tried and thrown away. Um, if you are using sweeteners on a low-carb, high-fat diet, your best options are to stick with xylitol, erythritol, and stevia with 90% stevia sides. I hope that information is helpful to you.